Our story started at the mansion of an Aldori swordlord. Drawn by the promise of a most dangerous task and a commensurately huge reward, heroes of all stripes gathered here. Ah, it's good to hear that voice again. What a great voice. Um, hey, this is the uh, one guy I almost played as. The pre mate I think. It's kind of looking at this portrait here. That's, um... Oh, what's her name? Amari? Is that her name? I think that's the only one that... Oh, is this Tartuccio over here? <laughs> Just... Look at him. He's checking my ass out. Look at him. Look at, look at those sights. That, 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 come on, man. All right. Let's continue. Where are they? This is taking forever. They didn't even say what this was for. Just that the Aldori were looking for heroes. Who are the Aldori anyway? Rich folk? Yep, Amiri. There she is. If you can't be patient, no one's keeping you here. Just go back to your mountains or whatever hole you crawled out of. The Aldori Sword Lords run the premier school for the dueling arts. They're also the richest and most influential group in this part of Brevoy. Take that tone with them, and they'll teach you some manners pretty quickly. And this is kind of why I was so interested in being an Aldori defender. Is because, you know, you're, you're here in Brevoy, where the, the Sword Lords are at. The Aldori Sword Lords arose when famed swordsman, Baron Syrian, Aldori, agreed to train a select group of pupils in his dueling techniques. They ruled Rosslyn for generations, each as prickly and impulsive as the Order's founder, though they are considered some of the finest sword fighters in the Intersea region. They are also obsessed with personal standing and honor, which matches kind of what I was thinking about my character, right? The ambition to own his own kingdom and everything. And then Brevoy. Brevoy is a re relatively young nation, having only existed since 4499 AR. The history of Brevoy before this time is the history of two often warring nations, Isia and Rosland. The coming of Koro the Conqueror changed all this. After securing the defeat and surrender of the two nations, Koro christened his family House uh, Regarvia. Its rule ended with the mysterious disappearance of every member of House Regarvia in 4699. So that's exactly 200 years later. Leaving Brevoy in a precarious political position. All right, you purple toad, just shut your trap. And if you can't, I'll help you. Off to a great start already. Hush, quiet. They're coming. And Lindsay. Look, there she is. Nice sword. Greetings, everyone. I am Sword Lord Jamandi Aldori, and this is Lord Mayor Yosef Salimius of Restov. Welcome to my mansion. Restov is one of the two largest cities in the fertile region of Rosland in the sou in southern Brevoy. Lord Mayor Yosef Salimius, Salimius leads the city, which is a trade and cultural center that borders the River Kingdoms, the Shrike River, and the Stolen Lands. As the birthplace of the Aldori dueling style, the city boasts several Aldori and Talden dueling schools, which has led to the city being a favorite place for young nobles to practice dueling championships. Most prominent among them is the Aldori, Aldori Academy, widely regarded as the region's finest war college. Yeah, that's where we were going to, I think. But we made it on merit, right? We don't have any... Well, maybe we are maybe we could be like a noble bastard or something. Who knows? That would fit my name. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for responding to our call. You may be few, but that's unavoidable. We need only the best of the best for this task. And I see true heroes before me, strong and fearless. Exactly what Restoff needs. The mayor, a middle-aged man with bushy sideburns and a monocle, wears a beaming smile. Continue. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, to the point. South of here, just beyond Brevoy's border, lies a region known as the Stolen Lands. 
This is disputed territory. And while it's long been claimed by nearby states, it's never been truly taken. I won't bore you with the legal technicalities. Suffice to say that anyone with enough courage and power to seize the stolen lands and name themselves Baron or Baroness, claiming dominion, well, none of the neighboring states would be able to challenge it. Of course, Restoff would be first to recognize the legitimacy of this new state, as well as the noble title of its founder. Hmm, the Stolen Lands are an almost wholly unsettled region in the northeastern section of the River Kingdoms, bordering the nation of Brevoy and serving as a buffer between Brevoy and the River Kingdoms. Traditionally, the haunt of bandits and monstrous humanoids, the Stolen Lands are regarded as stolen by all nations along their border, even though none have ever been able to keep these realms under their control for long. Hmm. Unfortunately, one serious obstacle stands between you and this title. A gang of bandits hold sway in the Stolen Lands. Their chief, who they call the Stag Lord, considers himself the rightful owner of these lands, and no one has yet been able to challenge his power. Bring me his head, and you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands as their legal ruler. Any questions? Yeah, there's a whole team of us. Who exactly will receive the Baron's title? I will, of course. I'm the leader of this team, after all. Don't worry, though. I'll make it worth your while to help me. We haven't yet begun, and you already speak of divvying rewards. What makes you think we'll even succeed? There's little point arguing over who gains the title when we'll most likely lose our lives there. Ah, Harem. <clears throat> if I may please answer the question. Jamandi clears her throat loudly, interrupting the argument. She takes a long pause, waiting for the voices to die down as everyone directs their attention toward her. We believe you're all equally deserving of a noble title. Over the course of your expedition, it will be up to you as a team to decide which of you is best suited to rule. Why not just recognize the Stag Lord as Baron? That's a good point. As I see it, this Stag Lord already holds power over the region with confidence. Many noble bloodlines were started by bandits who just got lucky, weren't they? Perhaps because we do have standards to maintain. This room has seen many celebrations of adventurers, and even those who just got lucky. But giving a noble title to a bandit lord? <laughs> that's one thing that's never happened here, and it won't while I still breathe. The sword lord's gaze is chilling as she responded. You're helping us found a barony? What do you gain from such generosity? Don't ask stupid questions. Why should you even care? What they have to gain and why, that's for Lady Aldori and I to discuss. It's none of your concern. Your only concern is to swing your sword around or whatever it is you do. That's what I do. Of course we stand to benefit from this enterprise. But if you're concerned that we intend to rule your country from afar, using you as a front, well, please know that these concerns are unfounded. Let's just say that we have a strong interest in the region's stability. We have need of a ruling power we can negotiate with, not bandit gangs and monster hordes. What is that smell in the air? Is it the smell of unspoken words and political intrigue? A tiefling girl is standing nearby, speaking in a hushed voice. Noticing you've heard her comment, she winks at you coyly. Yeah, I'm not so sure I believe that they don't want a puppet state there. That seems like a missed opportunity for a kingdom. But at the same time, I think if they can't have a puppet state, they still want like a buffer state that is on their side, right? So I don't think she's necessarily telling a complete lie, but yeah, they definitely would prefer a puppet state, I'm sure. What, re what rewards can we expect exactly? And what reward would you seek beyond a noble title and your own lands? The Lord Mayor's eyebrows rise so far he almost drops his monocle. We'll absorb the costs of preparing and equipping your expeditions. 
Once you return victorious, Restoff will also allocate you a significant sum to provide financial support for you to establish your country. Essentially, we'll help you build your capital. I hope such a reward is satisfactory. It's almost too satisfactory, to be honest. Yeah. You definitely want more than just a, a friend in the region. Words, words, words. Significant. Financial. I can't fill my belly with pretty words. Of course. There will also be an official banquet held in your honor. All of Rostov's high society will gather to celebrate your feat. Mm. Now you're talking. It's clear as day. Excellent. You venture forth tomorrow. For now, you can take some time to get to know one another better. Or you can head straight to your guest rooms to get some rest. You'll find we've already prepared supplies for you there. And thank you again for agreeing to take part in this expedition. I wish you luck. Well, thank you. Thank you again, with all my heart, for replying to this call. The flare in your eyes reveals your courage. The unshakable will that distinguishes true heroes. I look at you, O oh champions of Restoff, and doubt not for a second that you'll be victorious. So venture forth toward your feet. Go and return in triumph. Well, thank you. All right. Hi, my name's Lindsay. I'm a bard, though this is my first real adventure. So shall we go teach this stag lord a lesson? We sure will. Just wait. We've plenty of great feats in store. I'm Agronach. Pleased to meet you. What do you want from me? I'm Agronach. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Actually, I also wanted to ask you something. How do you feel about this Tartuccio fellow? I think he's pretty obnoxious personally. He appointed himself head of the team, and he's just after the Baron's crown, or whatever it is Baron's wear. It doesn't matter. I don't like him. I think you should be team leader. When I first saw you, I couldn't help but think, now here's a real hero. Someone who'll be praised in poems and songs. This... This is the person I'll write my book about. Wait, a book? Damn, I should have led with that. Please, just let me explain. You know what the trouble with most heroes' biographies is? They're always written years later, based on the tales of, best case, people who saw things from the outside. Worst case, someone heard about it from their brother, who heard it from their friend, who heard it from their cousin, and so on, adding a new batch of lies each time. Every time I read about a heroic journey, I think to myself, why didn't they just bring a bard with them to write it all down properly? And then I thought, I could be that bard. I just needed to find a suitable hero and volunteer to follow along on their glorious adventure. A great plan, huh? And here we are, with a heroic journey lying before us. Who's going to be the hero? Some dwarf who keeps muttering about how we'll all die? Or maybe that horrific scythe lady? Or, God forbid, Tartuccio? No way. Not a bad plan. It's settled then. I'll accomplish the feats and you'll write them down. What about that barbarian? She looks pretty heroic. I think her name's Amiri. I have nothing against Tartuccio. You know, I think uh, Ar Agronax are all right with this plan. Yeah, not a bad plan. Deal. To my room to write about tonight. See you in the morning. See you, Lindsay. All right. So we got Tartuccio right here. We don't like him. Tomorrow our glorious journey begins. Are you ready? I hope so. I don't need layabouts on the team. Finally, the idol talks over. Can't wait to set out. He's also heard about Jay Thal over here. What game is Jermondi playing? I'm not used to feeling like a pawn. Yeah, uh, I do want to warn anybody that there's a good chance that if a character, a potential party member, uh, does not want to um, see things my way, that uh, we might not keep them with us. Harem, this expedition is surely doomed. Surely. All right. Hey, this uh, symbol here, that's not the symbol that's on my shirt, is it? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, good. Casey. Casey. Northern architecture is beautiful, but very heavy. In my native land of Kadira, palaces are furnished quite differently. 
All right. To my room. Lindsay? Help! Help! Lindsay bursts into your room. She looks scared. Her face is smeared with soot, and she holds a weapon in her hands. What's going on? Is this a joke? Get out of my room. What's going on? The mansion's under attack. We need to help. Some villains broke in and started killing everyone. I barely made it. Hurry, we have to help the guards fight off the attackers, or we'll all be cut down one by one. As if to lend credence to Lindsay's words, a scream echoes from the hallway. No, Lindsay, don't go out there. Uh, you're not going anywhere. Enemy oh, we'll see about that. We will see about that. All right, so... There is a turn-based mode in this game. However, this game was made with being in uh having real time with pause so i'm going to try now typically i feel i'm a much better gamer in turn-based mode than i am in real time with pause but i want to try real time with pause i mean we did real time with pause with Baldur's gate and we did fine i think um so yeah we're gonna do it but we're gonna charge him i think we uh missed the chance for the charge Critical hit. He hit me for one damage. I'm going to attack him now. I'm going to miss. He missed. All right. Look at this, this duel. I missed again. He missed again. All right. This is good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I hit again. Let me um see. So I've got a seven modifier. Plus seven modifier. Plus five dex. Weapon focus plus one. Base attack plus one. And he's only got an armor class of seven. How did I miss? <laughs> How have I missed? I must have rolled a one on him or something. Oh, yeah. I mi critical miss. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not going to miss again. There we go. There's the damage, too. He's got a chain shirt and a dagger. Go and see what I'm wearing. I'm wearing studded leather light armor. Got a chain shirt here, which is better, but we get the armor check penalty. But I think we are going to wear that. That puts our AC at 18. Our AC doesn't change. Oh, because we lose the bonus. Then, yeah, it's probably better wearing the studded leather. Okay. I'll go ahead. Open the door up. I gotta get used to not being able to like rotate. Oh, sorry, Lindsay. Lindsay, the assassins are already here. Follow me quickly. All right, I'm here. They got someone. We have to help. Look, they're running. Get them. And what should I do with this one? We'll finish him later. He won't get away. All right, attack him. Ooh, with the critical hit. Lindsay, you gonna attack? Very nice. Just in time. A bit longer and I'd have been... Whew, I don't even want to think about it. Can you imagine what a terrible loss this would have been? But it's all right now. I'm safe, sound, and unscathed. Ready to lead you to victory. Lady Jamandi is holding the line in the banquet hall. You know, the one where she had us gathered before. We need to make our way to her. And along the way, we'll try to save some of these dummies who are supposed to accompany us to the stolen land. Speaking of dummies, take this ring. Quiet now, so that little fool doesn't hear us. She might try to steal it herself. It's magical. It'll protect you. You'll need it while you work to defend me. The gnome looks back at Lindsay and starts whispering as he takes a ring off his finger, handing it to you. Tartuccio's present. All right, so we got our first party here. And Tartuccio's president. President. <laughs> present. Plus one bonus to armor classes is a deflection bonus that does not stack with other deflection bonuses. Now, we don't really trust him, but this is a powerful ring. So we're going to put it on. Puts our AC at 19, which is pretty decent for this early on. All right. 
we're gonna loot everything. So we got some things back here we gotta loot. The path is clear. This poor bloke killed in their bed. Got a bow and some money. And some other things. This guy over here. I don't know what happened to you. Take that. We are slow, aren't we? All right, we've got an old map of Avistan, some money, and Curse of Ancient Iobaria I by Hastif Um. I don't know if we're going to read all the books in this playthrough. Sometimes I try to do it. Sometimes I don't try to do it. Um, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Hope they're okay with me looting everything. Probably not, but that's all right. Uh, let's save it. All right, attack. Miss. Miss. Sneak attack. Three damage. Miss. Come on, guys. Miss. Miss. Uh-oh. Lindsay's being attacked. How are we missing? There we go. Get in there. It's gonna be all right. One left. Leave this one to me. There we go. Come on. God damn, we are sucking. Miserable. Wait, their armor class is seven still. How many times did I critically miss? Oh, no. no okay. We're, we're down here. I was like, what? How? Okay. That is a 16 armor class. All right. All right. Well, that didn't go quite as well as I would have liked it to go. But we got some healing potions now. Let's go ahead and drink some of those. You guys can drink two of them. I'll drink one as well. All right. Anything else in here? I don't remember. Is this painting anything? No. Okay. All right. We got a bloody door over here. Oh no. Is everyone dead? Not looking good. Pathetic. They couldn't even defend themselves, but they thought they could conquer the stolen lands. I mean, dude, you were probably not in the <laughs> a great spot when we found you. Just want to point that out to you. We'll take this. Hide armor. That's medium. Well, their adventure has certainly come to an end. Tread lightly. I can't believe it. They could have been that could have been us. Could have been. Okay, got a kitchen. Take all that food. Some fish. Let us be careful. Thirty-five gold pieces. Blood for Gorum. Blood for Gorum. It's the end for you rats. Hey. Come on, we gotta help him. It doesn't matter because we can't hit anything. Look at that synchronization there. She did 19 damage. Oh, it's you. Stay up from under my feet or I'll strike you down. The barbarian's face is distorted with rage. She grinds her teeth and sweat drips from her forehead. Noticing Tartuccio, she swings her sword but stops it just in time. Blood for Gorum! Amiri takes a deep breath, then barks out. Swinging her bloody sword, she runs toward the sound of battle. Gorum, also known as our Lord in Iron, is a god of battle above all other pursuits. It is said that he would rust away into nothingness if there is ever a time with no more conflicts to be fought. His faith will believe he is present in every iron weapon of war that is forged. Barbarians. 
I think that's exactly how heroes should be. What, stupid, sweaty, and always looking for something to gobble up or lop the head off of? Calistria, save me from such heroes. Yeah, I don't know if she'd make the best hero, but she's cool. <laughs> Calistria, also known as the Savored Sting. The Unquenchable Fire is the goddess of lust and revenge who takes on many faces and guises. She is held in an especially high esteem or high regard by elves who often identify with her mercurial moods and changeable nature. A fondness for wasps has earned this vengeful deity the title of Savored Sting. Such creatures live on. Such creatures live on after harming their enemies, a trait Calistria's followers hope to emulate when pursuing their goals. Hmm, okay. Loot. Let's keep moving. The path is clear. There they are! The assassins! This is your last chance. Drop your weapons and we'll spare your lives. So generous. I'm afraid I can't offer you the same courtesy. Hey, you ugly mug, get them! What in hell's name is that? Well, that's not good, is it? We're coming in. I can't believe they don't stop and loot these guys. Your party has suffered from heavy encumbrance. Uh oh. We'll be fine. This passage this passage is blocked. You can't make it through this way. Actually, I just remembered. You can actually... um. Can I select multiple things? How do I... Is there like a quick drop? But at the end of the uh, level, you can actually loot everything. That's in the level. So that's what we'll do. Did I read that over there? The passage is blocked. You can't make it through this way. I think I did. I don't know. The heavy gate is secure. Is securely locked. The dexterity check should be easy. Attack him. Got to attack his opportunity. Good one damage. I don't think Tartuccio is hit at all. This whole damn mission. There we go. But really all you need is me. Agrinac. An armory. I'm sure Jumanji wouldn't mind if he borrowed some weapons. Anything else? Break the door to the armory and find some stuff. Oh, I'm going to find some stuff. All right. Take that. Ooh, some split banded mail. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't carry that, so. Breastplate. A key. Tower shield. God damn. We really need some people. More people in the party. I guess I should have gone strength based. <laughs> what have we here? This chest is full of gold. I guess it's for the guard's salaries, all things considered. Well, those freeloaders don't seem to have been working too hard for it. Maybe we should pocket it instead. Tertuccio looks at the chest on the table and rubs his hands together. What? No, we're heroes, not thieves. Who said we were stealing it? We'll just take the gold for safety so the assassins don't get it. And then we can heroically return it to Jamandi when this is all over. N uh, gold? Interesting. How much? Stealing from a sword lord in her own mansion? She'd have our heads. No distractions. If you haven't forgotten, they're trying to kill us. I'm gonna go to number three. Finally, a voice of reason. <laughs> Do what you want. I don't care. It was just a suggestion. But there's a lot of money in that chest, and with all these bandits running around, it wouldn't be any better if they stole it. Tatuccio shrugs with ostenta ostentatious nonchalance. Yeah, we're not going to steal the money. Even though it's probably the more efficient thing to do. I'll go ahead. Oh, familiar faces. I hope you're not so frightened as to swing at every shadow. It's me, Jathol. I don't recommend advancing down the hallway, assuming you value your life, of course. 
There were a few people with me, and you can see what happened to them. And just how did they all end up dead while you don't seem to have a scratch? Tortuccio eyes Jethal suspiciously. I'll answer but briefly and just once. Further scares and explanations will wait until we aren't being hunted by a group of assassins. Deal? All right. I'm undead. These traps are deadly to the living, but they're harmless to me. What do you mean, undead? Really? Like zombies or skeletons or... As I said, further explanations will wait until later. All you need to know right now is that we're on the same side, and we have to fight off a small army of hired assassins. Let's get to it. Jethal looks at Lindsay as though at an annoying fly. All right. Fourth party member. Let's head out. I don't remember our characters being so slow in this game. Man, we we move really slow, don't we? I've spotted Go ahead and disarm that for me. Applause, please. Applause, please. Still have a long way to go to get to level two. Okay. I see something. I couldn't remember. I still can't remember when we get to level two. Applause, please. I'm excited for it though. I love leveling up. Who doesn't though? A Faust. All right, go ahead and loot this, or I mean, pick that. Anything else? Oh, now we move quick. I guess it matters how far you you go, huh? What are you dallying for? I'm telling you, Jamandi's cash has to be here somewhere. Well, hurry it up before... Stop. Someone's coming. And then our leader charged forwards. Hey, hey, wait for me. Two damage. Ooh, got a sneak attack on me. That's not good. Another five. Damn, we need to... Good. Come on, keep dodging, keep dodging. There we go. Phew. Request. Gonna loot that, and we need to drink some potions. Boop, 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 potions. There. And use. Perfect. We rolled well on those potions. Okay. My least favorite part of the tutorial. I can never remember how to do this. <laughs> like, quickly. Alright, Jethal, you, you go to the other attention. one. Alright, so. What you have to do here is you have to get all the swords pointing either up or down. Actually, you have to do it both ways, but start with one of them. Okay. So that one did what? That one controls these two. Whereas this one controls these two. Okay. Speed. So this one just controls that one. That one controls those ones. What about this one? Okay. So now I should be able to do... Duty calls. That. They're all down. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Share your will. That opened one of them. The one over here. Everyone counts on me. Alright, so we take all of that. Take all that. I'm sure she won't mind. And we've got a wand of magic missile and some masswork nunchuck nunchakus. Nunchucks. Um, okay, so now we gotta get everything up. Ask. There we go. Okay, never mind. It's easy. 
Like the first time I've ever done that. <laughs> that well at that. The power of recording. Okay. This room is just full of treasure. Really, the wand of magic missile is the only thing that's of real value that we got out of that. But that's okay. All right. We need to change our formation. Lindsay should not be there. Yeah, something more like that. All right. Attack them. A solid plan. You cannot stand against me. Good. Everyone on this guy now. Eight damage to him there. Come on. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Everything is so much fun with a little fire. What a night, huh? I thought I was all alone. It's good you're here. It's a bit boring chasing fool assassins without anyone watching the show. The tiefling girl you saw at the reception before the attack stops nearby and waves her tail with excitement. It's not fun at all. Many people have died for nothing. I don't think we've met. You sound like a Kelishite, am I right? There are assassins on the prowl. We have to go. You sound like a Kelishite, am I right? Of course. I'm from Kadira. But tales of hot deserts and shady oases can wait until the fighting's finished. But if you'd like to share a dinner and pleasant conversation, just say the word. I like making new friends. Mm. I don't think we've met. I am Kayesi. One of the many here who seek a better fate, answering the call of Lady Jamandi. But unlike the others, I never drop my guard, day or night. It's why I'm still alive. The girl gives you a mocking half bow. There are assassins on the prowl. We have to go. I don't know where you're heading, but I'll be at the entrance to the main hall. I think I saw some guards there. Join me there, if you wish. The tiefling salutes you and runs ahead nimbly. All right. More corpses on the floor here. It's not easy to wash out blood, you know. Grotus, I can sense your silhouette hovering over me. It won't be much longer. Soon we shall meet, O oh Lord of Oblivion. A dwarf is lying on the ground, staring into the dark sky. He doesn't seem to have any severe wounds, but his trembling whispers are weak, as soon as though he were at death's door. What's wrong? I'm dying. I knew this expedition was doomed. Oh, Grotus, my vision darkens. Grotus is the god of the end times, a sentient and cruel moonlit that looks down upon the boneyard and waits for the last living soul to die. When Phirasma judges the last soul after the last living body dies on the material plane, Grotus will descend to the boneyard and move on to the material plane to clean up and pack the dust away for another reality. No one really knows what Grotus is doing is going to do once the last soul is judged, but it is generally accepted that it will not be pleasant. Aren't you being a bit premature? Look at yourself. You've barely you've barely got a scratch. You're wrong. Who would know better than I the severity of my own wounds? I can feel the last drops of vital force leaving me. Terrible roll. Quite the act, or quit the act. Stand and fight, and I'll, or I'll really send you to your final rest. I can't. God damn it! You. I'm being taken away into the darkness. Hope this isn't indicative of how we'll be rolling the whole game. Up, you faker! Just look at him! Dying, he says. What a buffoon! Come on, get up now! Or I'll tap dance on your corpse! Tartuccio gives the dwarf a swift kick. It, uh, it seems I will live. I suppose I must postpone meeting my god. Not for long, I'm sure. But while we remain in this transient world, Aram is at your service. Aram. The dwarf grunts as he regains his feet and warily looks down at his blood-stained armor. You know, something I never noticed is that you have these stag statues 
or these stag man statues in this place, which is interesting. Considering the stag lord and everything. All right, we've got another character. I've never gone this way. Oh, there's nothing to go through. Oh, wait. I've never been in here. Oh my God, there's something I've never seen before. Oh my God. What the hell? The heavy grate is securely locked. Hmm. Masterwork longsword, holy shit. What a find. Masterwork dueling sword would have been nicer, but you know. Beggars can't be choosers. I can't believe I've never seen that before. I've done this portion of the game quite a lot from restarting the game over and over again. Hello. You run and get an axe. You bring more water. You stay here and hold our defense. Those assassins are still around here somewhere. The stout man's unshaven face is covered with scars. There's blood on his armor, but he doesn't seem to notice his wounds as he confidently gives orders to the guards. Aha! Some of our guests survived. Good. You need to get to the banquet hall and help Lady Jamandi. He turns to you. Who are you? Keston, House Gares, a fighter in the service of Sword Lord Jamandi Aldori. Right now, I'm in charge of the mansion guards. As you can see, there's a lot to do. House Gares is based in the western part of Bravoy, in the foothills of the Gulishkin Mountains. It is led by Lord Howlin Gares, who is a widower. His adoptive heir is Tovo Golka a dwarf and son of the clan chief of the Golka Dwarves holding. House Garis, or Garas, had a good relationship with the, Gol with the Golka Dwarves until the dwarves vanished. Members of the house worked the metal that the dwarves mined. The house's motto is strong as the mountains. If I were a rich and influential lady like Jamandi, I'd also give myself a manly captain of the guard. Or two. The girl casts a coy look at Kestern and remarks sweetly, What's going on here? Someone opened the gate, let in a group of assassins in the middle of the night. Now they've set the mansion on fire to cut off access to the hall. They don't want Lady Jamande to get reinforcements. We cleared the passage so you can get through. Just try to avoid inhaling the smoke. We'll be right behind you. We just need to put out the fire first to save the mansion. Considering Lady Jamande's fame, I'm not surprised that a whole pack of assassins were unleashed on her, including a giant. But what's at stake? What could anyone hope to gain? The tiefling squints, obviously curious and thinking quickly. Hmm. Do you need help putting out the fire? No, we'll manage. I've got my best people here, those who still live. Your place is by Lady Algori's side. It doesn't seem right. What if some of the guards are wounded? We need to help them. Where's the hall? You'll have to run through the fire. We've almost put it out at the entrance, so your main concern should be to not inhale any smoke. Hold your breath and take the first right, then head straight down the hallway. Kestrin points to the burning building. I'll go immediately. Fire doesn't frighten me, thanks to hell's blood running in my veins. I'll go ahead and wait for you on the other side. Catch up! The tiefling girl starts off and dashes through the fire. The plain of hell is the ultimate expression of evil order in the great beyond, of the weak subjugated to serve the strong, of complete obedience and unquestioning faith. Its tortures are not willful and random like the torments of the abyss, or purely sadistic and spiteful like those of Abaddon. Evil and obedience here are honed to a razor's edge in service to a greater purpose, that of bending the will of souls in the very architecture of creation itself to the greater glory of the Lord Asmodeus and his perfect order. Divided into nine district distinct layers, each ruled by an archdevil and loyal to Asmodeus, hell is the home of myriad devils and other evil outsiders, and sadly the final destination for countless mortal souls. May Abadar keep you safe. Yeah, we know a lot about hell from our Wrath of the Righteous playthrough. I love these. Man, look at that scream. He is, he is shouting. And so our adventure started. Earlier and much more tragic than we'd expected. The whole team who'd gathered in the hall yesterday had been reduced to but a handful of brave souls led by Agrinac, and not at all by that scoundrel Tartuccio, 
No matter how he might have imagined himself, Jamandi Aldori was waiting for us. But to get to her, we'd have to march through fire. Literally. As we approached the burning, bu bu burning building, we drenched ourselves with buckets of water, tried to find a less dangerous passage, covered our noses and mouths before we rushed inside. Drenched ourselves with buckets of water. Prudence is the key to victory. Before moving through the fire, we thoroughly wet our clothes and hair. Hair. After that, we covered our noses and mouths before we rushed inside. It was a good thing we hadn't wasted any time. After entering the building and taking just a few steps forward, the wall behind us slanted and crashed down with a terrible cracking sound, blocking the way back. Well, we may not have planned on going back if, we, if we'd come in a little later. The flaming logs and red-hot bricks would have fallen right on our heads. Regardless, we were left with only one way to go. The hot air burned our lungs and our eyes watered from the smoke, but Agronach led us stubbornly through the flames, while Tartuccio did nothing useful at all. We'd made it to the hallway leading to the banquet hall when we heard someone calling for us. It was Valerie, one of the guards I'd chatted with a bit in the banquet hall. Even then, in that calm setting, I'd been stunned by her beauty. But now, amid the smoke and flame, she looked like a celestial avenger, an armored deity menacing but beautiful and merciful, descending from the high, higher spheres to help us poor mortals. She held a burned, barely living guard in her arms. There are two more, she shouted as she passed by us. They are wounded. Help me pull them all out. Totushio grumbled something about how Jamandi was waiting for us. Meanwhile, Agronach rushed to save the guards from the fire or shouted to, to Valerie that she should leave them and join us to help Jamandi Aldori. Rushed to save them. Ooh. Saving the poor fellows was harder than it had seemed. We inhaled a lot of smoke and burned ourselves more than once before managing to pull them away from the fire. Only then did Valerie pause to catch her breath and wipe the sweat from her face. Thank you. That was truly noble of you, she said. And now, let us rush to Lady Aldori's aid. Ensuring the guards were secured, rescued, we... Wait. <laughs> Ensuring the guards that we'd rescued were relatively safe, we made our way to the hall, where the battle was already in full swing. All right, so we're all fatigued because of our failure there. Eh. It's not good. Oh, man, we have to collect everything now. Yeah, so we're going to have to drop stuff as soon as we get in here. Some diseases, poisons, and spells can deal damage directly to your character's ability scores. Oh, I hate those. Those are the worst. Reinforcements are already on the way. Say your prayers, scum. Alright, so we need to drop stuff. Oops, I mean, we want to drop. There we go. Drop. Drop. Really surprised. Can't drop multiple things at once. That's something crazy. I thought you could. Come on. There's the heavy stuff. A tower shield is super heavy. Oh, damn. Actually, you're already, you've already got banned in the mail. And a tower shield. You're fine. Alright. Get in there. Let us strike as one. Who will prevail? Does it matter? Alright, kill this one. He's almost dead. Alright. Aim carefully. Get in there. Kill the leader. Uh am I running away afraid? Yes. Okay. Get back in here. OJ Thal's down. Alright, it's just the chanters now. One more. There we go. And they killed the drag or the dragon. The giant. Alright, salute. Loot. 
did this thing too. All right. What did she say? Dialogue. Praise be, Aristotle. We made it. That's it. Time to count our losses, I suppose. All right. Jamandi Aldori. Thank you for your valor and bravery. The enemy was strong, but you were stronger. And that means I made the right choice. Just as I thought, there were worthy leaders among you. I'm especially grateful to them for the courage and common sense they showed while defending the mansion. But this attack means we have even less time than I thought. Someone already knows of our plans and is acting against us. You'll begin your expedition immediately. As Jamandi catches her breath, she looks over the, the trashed banquet hall and salutes the survivors. Lady Aldori, please, I know who arranged this attack. The vile king of Pitax, Iroveti. What's more, I know who among us works for him. Hey, you! Show everyone the ring you're wearing. You think I wouldn't recognize Iroveti's seal? That's why he wasn't killed. The bandits recognized him as one of their own by this signet ring. I have no connections to Pitax, but Tartuccio's name, accent, and clothes seem like he came straight from there. Which of us looks more likely to be... Or more like they might be Eravetti's spy. Or Tartuccio is trying to set me up. He's the one who gave me the ring. Attack. Liar. I kind of wanted to try that, but I don't think it ends well. Tartuccio is trying to set me up. Yes. Such a gambit would be typical of Eravetti and his henchmen. And yet, it still seems suspicious. At the beginning of battle in the mansion, Tartuccio gave you a ring of protection. You kept it. There's definitely a spy among us. But who? All I have is one word against another. I'm afraid you're both under suspicion. They both came to your aid, Lady Jamandi. But a liar's cunning knows no bounds. I've never met these two or their companions. For all I know, they're all conspiring spies. How could you say that? We fought together. We literally went through fire together. And then you vanished into thin air after you promised you'd wait. My words might be rash. The tiefling is obviously embarrassed. I bet my life despise anyone but this man. I saw how he dealt with those creeps with my own eyes. A true warrior. I'd go with him through hell and high water. Thank you. This purple crook on the other hand. <laughs> He's got the eyes of a spy and the mug of a spy. Amir is awesome. <laughs> Lady Aldori, don't listen to this thick-headed barbarian. She doesn't know what she's talking about. During the attack, our leader showed his true colors. He forced us to break into the armory and rob it. Uh, we were in the middle of a battle and needed weapons. There was no time to run and ask permission. Yeah, we're more chaotic than lawful, so we're going to go with that one. Considering the circumstances, that was more than reasonable. Thank you. Is it not insane to be faced with death and stop to question whether you may be breaking some law or rule? Our leader acted wisely. There is a difference between initiative taken in battle and blatant arrogation. How can someone who disregards authorities be a leader himself? Ah. Uh. What about that trick he pulled right before we came in here? He knew very well you were fighting the enemy, but instead of rushing to help you, he dallied as long as he could, dropping everything to save people from the fire, even though the guards were handling things just fine. He was obviously hoping to show up too late and find you already dead. Hmm. You helped her save people from the valor or but <laughs> from the fires. Uh, neutral good. People were dying right in front of me. How could I just walk by? Really, Tartuccio? You're seriously trying to blame someone for saving people from a fire? All right, we were really diplomatic in this one. I like it. May Shellen spare me from ever having to make such a choice, but he behaved decently as a true leader. A true leader is someone who has their priorities straight, not someone who would put a valuable ally's life in danger for the sake of some servant. Yeah, we're not going to like you. <laughs> Enough squabbling. I'm still not sure which of you I can trust. However, the risk of entrusting the whole affair to a spy is too great. 
Here's what we'll do. Two teams will head out. That way, I'll know at least one group can be counted on to serve my interests in the Stolen Lands. Hmm. Lady Aldori, most of those who are to set off for the Stolen Lands have been killed. Those who yet live will require help. Please allow me to join the expedition. Valerie bows respectfully to the Sword Lord. I'm sad to lose such a talented warrior. But you're right, Valerie. They have greater need of you right now. Go, and may Abadar keep you. Which of the two teams would you prefer to accompany? Abadar. I think it's the first time we've heard his name. Abadar, the god of cities, law, merchants, and wealth, also called, called the god of walls and ditches. In the Eastern Dragon Empires, is known to be a patient deity, maintaining a strong neutral stance in his actions. He sets forth to expand civilization and order among the peoples of Galarian. If Tartuccio allows, I would join his team. Forgive me, but I don't appreciate your willfulness. It is strange that since we helped her, but she's against us because we took weapons from the armory. Eh. And I like our leader. What wisdom lies in minding orders, laws, and rules in the face of oblivion, knowing not whether you'll be alive tomorrow? I will go with his team. I'm surprised at this turn of events. Like, I... I like, obviously, I, I know why, mechanically, why it's happening. But Harem, I thought, was going to be against me. But I guess since I'm chaotic good, he might like my chaotic side. Because I don't really follow the rules. I just do what's right. Our leader is good in battle, but I don't like all the spiritual agonizing. I prefer those who can act without wasting time helping every little pipsqueak. Those like Tartuccio. Ugh. Tartuccio is going to take the credit for himself and be done with it. Shellen, spare me from such allies. I'm going with you. You're a hero worthy of my quill. Thank you, Lindsay. Shellen, also known as Eternal Rose, the Eternal Maiden, and the Incorruptible, is the goddess of art, beauty, love, and music, and the half-sister of Zan Kuthan. Shellen focuses just as much attention on internal beauty as external, as aspects of her role as goddess of beauty, Shellen also promotes the creation of art and the composing and performance of music. Clerics of Shellen frequently are artists themselves. As the goddess of love, Shellen encourages the prol proliferation of that feeling in all its forms. She is not the goddess of sexuality, lust, or fertility. It makes a very clear distinction between love and, and sexuality, although she does not in any way discourage erotic love. The few paladins who worship her practice courtly love. As for me, I know neither of these two, at least not well enough, and I have no wish to become an unwitting pawn to an unworthy leader. If Lady Jamandi allows, I'll remain in Restoff and help mend the wounds this attack has inflicted. But who knows? The road may bring me to the Stolen Lands, but not yet. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, she's a DLC character, right? Like she wasn't in the original game. I don't even need to think. I'm coming with this man. As for you, Purple Toad, just wait until we meet along the way. I'll be sure to hang your rotten spy guts from the trees. All right, we have two teams. To avoid unnecessary conflict on the road, you'll each take a different route to the Stolen Lands. Tartuccio's team will go through Nevactas Crossing. The garrison commandant will provide him all the help he needs. You will take your team to Oleg Leviton's trading post. He's been complaining about the Stag Lord's bandits for a while now. There, you'll be provided with all the necessary travel supplies. Camping supplies and rations times four and science scroll of raised dead. So, Navakta's Crossing is a village at the very southern edge of Roslyn, protected by a wooden, wooden palisade wall surrounding it. The South Roslyn Road runs through the village, as does the road leading to the newly established settlement at Varnhold. This place is home to trappers, anglers, hunters, and tra tradesmen. The locals are ser a serious bunch and very sus suspicious of strangers, especially those from the Stolen Lands. Oleg's Trading Post This abandoned border fort at the southern edge of Roslyn found a new life recently. Oleg and Svetlana Lev Leviton a couple from Restov rebuilt it into a trading post. This place is now one of the few hospital, hospitable 
shelters for travelers in the surrounding wilderness. I'd like to believe you, but I know all too well how convincing traitors and spies can be. If you're truly innocent, I hope you can forgive me this precaution. Of course. While you're away, Keston will investigate the night's events and learn who in Restov is working for Patox. But you should know that it isn't just Patox we need to worry about. The Royal House of Sertova may also interfere in our plans. I've managed to keep this affair a secret from them so far, but that can't last long. By my estimations, you have no more than three months. After that, any feats you accomplish will be pointless. All right, our first time limit in the game. So Patox, long a haven for thieves and smugglers, Patox is a hub for trade in the River Kingdoms. It aspires to be a center of culture and higher learning as well, but cannot escape its more unsavory origins. In the Royal House of Sertova, House Sertova, the current ruling family of Bravoy, is also the oldest Brevik noble family and the most influential. Their original holdings are the environs of Port Ice in northern Isia and the shores of the Lake of Mists and Vales. The Sertovas are known as careful and cunning diplomats. Before Coral the Conqueror invaded, the Sertovas were known as pirates and raiders, and the family still has many connections with the pirates and brigands of the region, many of whom are distant relations of the Sertova clan. Their family motto is, Ours is the right. And now, farewell. This battle was but the first ordeal along your path, and you overcame it as true champions of Restall. May the obstacles that follow also fall to your feet. Fear nothing, my friends, and return victorious. Hurrah! Alright. Wait, my goods. My stuff. No, I forgot to pick it up. All that armor, all that money, it's gone. Surviving a terrible night, our small team set off to brave our fate. Beware, stolen lands. Heroes are on the way. Hell yeah. There he is. There's, there's us. Looks just like us. All right. And here we have the world map. Look at it. In all its glory. We're going to explore every single place. Oh, man. I'm excited. It is quite large. <laughs> like, it just keeps going. It's crazy. It really is. Oh, it goes... I don't even remember it going this far. Yeah, here's Patox. I wonder if this map is bigger than the, um, the, uh, Wrath of the Righteous one. It might just, like, go through it slower. There we are. Okay, so I think we are going to end the episode there, guys. In the next episode, we will, uh, make our way for Oleg's, uh, trading post. Until then... Hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day, and I'll catch you later.